bright duty every student matters hello dear students welcome to another lecture in the last part of this video we had covered the first seven stanzas of your poem lord ulin's daughter written by thomas campbell not only did i explain you the stanzas word to word and line by line i also discussed with you the poetic devices simultaneously now continuing with the poem we'll start with the eighth stanza so but still as wilder blew the wind and as the night grew drearer a down the glen rode armed men their trampling sounded nearer so but still as wilder blew the wind wild so the wind was blowing very wildly la wildly now what does that mean that the intensity the speed of the wind was very very high and the night grew drearer drearer means the night also grew darker it grew very scary so the night was getting scarier the wind was blowing very very fast now a down the glen rode armed men a down means coming down who came down the armed men so glen again we've discussed this word earlier glen means a valley so as the wind started blowing more wildly the night got scarier they saw that Lord Ulin's men, who have been described by using the word armed. Now, what do we mean by armed? They were not empty-handed. They had weapons with themselves. They were full prepared to kill the chieftain who had fled away with Lord Ulin's daughter. So, coming down the valley they saw lord ulin's men who were armed who had weapons with them their trampling sounded nearer now what is trampling the sound of the horses you know when the horses run the sound that you can hear of their feet is the trampling so they could hear that sound of the horses coming nearer to them so with every passing moment they could feel that those men were approaching them that those men were coming near to them so what did we read in this stanza that as the wind became wilder the wind became more strong and the night grew drearer the night also became scary the armed men the lord ulin's men who had weapons in their hand they came down the valley and the uh, you know the chieftain and the others also could hear the sound of the horses coming near to them so they knew that they were approaching them that they were very very close to them now so let us discuss the rhyme scheme now wind the first line last word is wind so we give it the alphabet a drearer we give it the alphabet b now men has got no rhyming with either wind or drearer so we give it a different alphabet which is c and the last one is nearer which is rhyming with drearer so b so what is the rhyme scheme a b c b okay now the second poetic device that we have in this stanza is basically inversion again when the subject is used later and the object is used first it is inversion so if we talk about inversion in the first line only but still as wilder blew the wind now what are we talking about in this line we are talking about the wind which is my subject so rather than the subject being at the first place it is at the end so this is a case of inversion 
Again, the third line of the stanza. A down the glen road armed men. Who are we talking about this line? We are talking about the men with weapons in their hands. So, this is my subject. Again, rather than the subject being at the beginning, it is at the end. So, this is the case of inversion again. Okay. Next stanza. O haste, the haste, the lady cries. Though tempests round us gather, I'll meet the raging of the skies, but not an angry father. Now, finally, the lady, that is Lord Ulin's daughter, she spoke. She told the boatman, she started crying, she started requesting the boatman that, Oh, haste thee, haste. Haste means hurry. Okay? The, we've read it earlier also, is the old English word for you. So, she started crying and she told the, bat, uh, the boatman that, Please, you... Uh, row the boat as quickly, as hastily as you can. Though the tempest round us gather. Tempest means storm. That I know if we enter the water, the storm is going to gather round us. Means it is going to surround us. We are going to be trapped in the storm. But still, I will meet the raging of the skies. Raging means anger. She says, I am ready to do that. I am ready to go into the middle of the water. I am ready to see what the storm can do to me. But I do not wish to meet my angry father. So, she was ready to lay away her life. She knew how dangerous the storm was. But despite that, she requested the boatman that please take me away from here as quickly as you can. I know that there is a very heavy storm in the water and once we get into it, we are going to be surrounded by it. But despite that, I am ready. I will meet the raging, the angry skies, means I will meet the storm, but I do not wish to meet my father who is so angry with me. So, the poetic device, the rhyme scheme first. So, cries in skies, A, A, gather in father, B, B. So, the rhyme scheme of this stanza is A, B, A, B. Now, the second poetic device is again inversion. Inversion, why? Because it says that, oh, where is it? Yes, so, though the tempest Round us gather. Now, what is the subject in this sentence? Us. We are talking about us. So, this is my subject. But again, we've used the subject later and the object is used earlier. So, this is inversion. And the most important and the new poetic device that I'm going to introduce to you in this stanza is repetition. Repetition means when a word is repeated in a line. Why is it repeated? Because the poet wishes to give more emphasis. It wishes to give more stress on what is to be said. For example, the first line you can see, the word haste is repeated twice. Why is it repeated twice? Because the poet is emphasizing upon the desperation of this lady, Lord Ulin's daughter, who wanted to run away from her father despite knowing that the storm was very vile and that she would be, you know, she is going to die if she enters the water. But this word has been repeated twice to, uh, you know, lay stress on the Desperation on the keenness of this girl. Okay.
The boatman has left a stormy land, a stormy sea before her. When, oh, too strong for human hand, the tempest gathered over her. So the boat has left a stormy land, stormy land. Now why has the poet used the word stormy for land? Because on the land was her father and her father's men who were ready to kill her lover. So that land was equally stormy, was equally dangerous for her as the stormy sea, the water that she could see before her. When, oh, too strong for human hand, the tempest gathered over her. So the boat finally left the shore. It, you know, went away from that shore, that shore which has been described as stormy. Why? Because her father's men and her father had reached there and they would have killed her lover. So the boat had left that stormy land and where did the boat go to? The boat went over the stormy sea. The boat was getting into the sea which was equally stormy and dangerous. When, oh, too strong for human hand, the tempest gathered over her. Tempest, like I told you above, means the storm. Too strong for human hand. What do we mean by this? Too strong for human hand means something that cannot be controlled by you. Something which is beyond your control. Okay. Now here we are talking about a storm. Storm is a natural disaster. We cannot do anything about it. And if a storm is very dangerous, then you can have no control over it at all. So here she entered towards the storm which was too strong for any human being to control it. And that storm gathered over her, that storm surrounded her, that storm overpowered her. So what does this stanza tell us? That the boat finally it went away from the land which was stormy, that is which was dangerous because Lord Ulin and her men were waiting there to kill her lover. The boat went towards the sea which was equally dangerous because of the storm in it. And finally when they reached in the middle of the sea, the storm was so strong and powerful that they could not control it and they were overpowered by it. They were totally trapped in the storm. Okay, so rhyme scheme. Again, land and hand, a a. Her and her is BB. So the rhyme scheme is AB, AB. Now the next poetic device that we have in this stanza is alliteration. Now like I told you, alliteration is a poetic device in which the first sound of the alphabet is repeated more than once. So what are the examples of alliteration that we have in here? Stormy C. Sound of S is being repeated. Human hand. Again, the sound of H is being repeated. Okay, let us move now. Okay. And still they rode amidst the roar of waters fast prevailing. Lord Olin reached that fatal shore, his wrath was changed to wailing. So still they rode amidst the roar. Amidst means middle of. Roar means that storm that was so strong that they could actually hear it. This word roar is the sound of a lion. We say that a lion is roaring. So a roar is a sound which is very strong and powerful. 
So here we can very well imagine that the storm was so strong, it was so wild, it was so violent that one could hear it as well. So despite knowing how dangerous the storm was, they continued rowing in the middle of it, of waters fast prevailing. Prevailing, the water was continuously getting over them. The water was continuously overpowering them. Lord Ulin reached that fatal shore. Fatal means deadly. So that shore which was so deadly, Lord Ulin finally reached there. His wrath was changed to wailing. And the moment he reached there and the moment he saw his daughter in such a condition, his wrath means his anger was changed to wailing. Wailing means lamenting. He started crying when he saw his daughter in such a condition. So what does the stanza tell us? That the storm was very violent. It was so violent that it was actually roaring, that one could actually hear it. And irrespective of that, although they could see the storm being so dangerous, they continued to row in the middle of it. The water was so fast, it was so quick in nature that it was completely prevailing. It was overpowering them. And finally, Lord Ulin reached that shore. And when he saw his daughter, his anger was changed and he started crying. So his anger was transformed to his lament, his regret, his sadness. So, what are the poetic devices now? Again, first let us discuss the rhyme scheme. Roar and shore, A, A, prevailing and wailing, B, B. So, the rhyme scheme is again A, B, A, B. And a new poetic device that I am going to introduce to you in this stanza is transferred epithet. Now, what is a transferred epithet? Transferred epithet is a poetic device in which the poet uses an adjective in an incorrect manner. Okay. For example, if you see here, fatal shore is the example of transferred epithet here. Now, the shore was not dangerous. Fatal means something which is deadly. The shore was not dangerous. What was dangerous here? The water because the storm was in the sea. So it was the sea which was dangerous. But despite that, the poet used the word fatal for the shore. So this is an incorrect usage of the adjective fatal. In place of using the word fatal for the sea, we have used it for shore. So this is transferred epithet. Okay. Okay, the next stanza says For so dismayed through storm and shade, his child he did discover. One lovely hand she stretched for aid, and one was round her lover. Sore dismay, sore means a lot of, okay, and dismay means sadness. So, Lord Ulin, when he reached that shore, he was very, very sad and through that storm and through that shade, shade means darkness, that in that storm, in that darkness, he finally discovered his child. He could finally see that his daughter was stuck in that sea. One lovely hand she stretched for aid. Aid means help. Stretched means calling. So with one hand she was calling out for help and one was round her lover. And with the other hand she was holding her lover. She was holding the chieftain. So this is how Lord Ulin saw his daughter. So when he reached the shore, he was very sad when he saw that in the middle of that storm, in the middle of that darkness, he could finally discover, he could finally see his daughter. 
one lovely hand means you know with one hand she was calling out for help and one hand was around her lover so again the rhyme scheme of the stanza shade and aid so a a discover and lover b b so a b a b now the second poetic device that we have in this stanza is alliteration the repetition of the alphabet what is the example of alliteration did discover so did the sound of d is being repeated and the last poetic device that we have in this stanza is inversion again when the subject comes later and the object comes first what is the example of inversion now the line his child he did discover what is the subject in this sentence he so he is the subject which should have come at the first place but it is coming after the object so this is an example of inversion the next stanza says come back come back he cried in grief across the stormy water and i'll forgive your highland chief my daughter oh my daughter so now this is what lord ulin was speaking he was very sad grief means sorrow sadness lord ulin when he saw his child in that condition he started crying out of sadness he said come back come back please come back across the stormy water that please do something cross the stormy water and come back to me and i will forgive your highland chief i will forgive your lover who is the chief of the mountain my daughter oh my daughter so he was calling out to his daughter he was telling her that please come back and he also told her that do whatever it takes just cross this water come back to me and i am going to forgive both of you your lover is also going to be forgiven by me and i will not do anything to him but alas it was too late so what are my poetic devices now first is rhyme scheme so grief and chief water and daughter so a b a b the next poetic device that we have is repetition when like i told you a word is repeated more than once because there is something very important that you wish to emphasize on here are uh, two examples of repetition one is come back come back we can see in the first line come back come back and then we have my daughter which is repeated twice in the last line and why is this repetition used in this stanza because these two lines tell us how desperate how eager lord ulin was for his daughter to just come back to him once he just wanted his daughter to be safe and to reach back to the shore the last stanza says it was vain the loud waves lashed the shore return or aid preventing the waters wild went over his child and he was left lamenting so it was vain and this is again the old english way of writing it was what do we mean by the word vain vain means useless so it was totally useless now lord ulin asking his daughter to come back to him was of no use at all because the loud waves lashed the shore lashed means when the waves when the sea waves you know just come over the shore with a huge sound that they make you know that sound is the lashing sound 
so the water had become so fierce it had become so violent now that the waves were lashing the shore they were coming over to the shore now return or aid preventing and lord ulen's daughter was stuck at such a position that she could neither return from there nor could anyone help her aid we have read in the above stanzas also so she was stuck she was trapped in the storm she could neither come back to the storm from there uh, come back to the shore from there nor could she expect anyone to help her that was not possible the waters wild went over his child so the waters wild means the violent water the storm went over his child means finally there was a huge wave of water that came over lord ulen's child and she was drowned in the water she went into the water and he was left lamenting lamenting means to regret to cry over something to feel bad about something so lord ulen could not do anything it was totally useless because the waves the water had become so loud and violent that they were lashing on the shore they were coming onto the shore the place where lord ulen's daughter was stuck she could neither return back from there nor could she expect anyone to help her also lord ulen in front of his eyes saw his daughter getting drowned in water there was a huge wave of water which made his daughter drown and he could not do anything but to cry over the loss that he had had so the rhyme scheme of this stanza now shore is a preventing is b child it does not rhyme with either of the above two words so this is c and lamenting is preventing so a b c d is my rhyming scheme now next we have alliteration now what are the examples of alliteration that we have in this stanza we have water wild went so these are the three words beginning with the alphabet w this is alliteration and then we have left lamenting again beginning with the sound l and with this my dear students we come to the end of the explanation of this poem by thomas campbell so we read that this poem was basically a tragedy wherein lord ulen's daughter had eloped had you know had run away with her lover her lover was the chief of an island uh, which was the ulvas island now the reason why they were running away was because her father's men with weapons in their hands were chasing them were looking out for them and they were sure that if they would be discovered then her lover is going to be killed they reached the sea shore it was a very stormy night they requested the boatman to help them get away from there the boatman was initially not willing because the weather like i told you was not a good one but then he agreed telling the chief that i am going to take you away because i don't want this lady to be into any trouble so when they were going away from there they could hear the sound of the horses of lord ulen's men approaching them finally the girl along with her lover and the boatman entered the stormy sea her father reached the shore he saw his daughter trapped he was uh, you know feeling bad he requested her to come back and he also told her that i'm going to forgive your lover but please come back but it was too late now because the sea was so overpowering the waves were so strong and fierce that the lady lord ulen's daughter got drowned in the water and lord ulen could not do anything but cry 
So my dear students, I hope you have understood the poem. We have explained you every word and every line of this stanza. The poetic devices have been explained to you simultaneously. Now the back exercises of this poem, I am going to discuss them with you in the next part of my lecture. So I will see you again in my next video.